Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Half and I Say Podcast with your host, Janine. And Joshua. That was a little slow, because I'm a little bit slow. No, I thought you were giving me a signal to say something, but I think I missed the cue. No, I'm a little bit slow because it's already 9.40. I know, we're actually recording quite late today, but we decided that we should before the Eid break. But we should because it's a special day for us. It is a special day for us, yes. Because? It's Juneteenth. I mean, yes, Juneteenth is equally special, but personally to us. Yes, so today marks our three years of being together. Mm. Not, yeah, being together, yes. Cause like officially. Officially together, A girlfriend yes. and a boyfriend. Yes, because I did the old traditional thing where I had to formally ask, hey, would you be my girlfriend? He had to force me. Kidding, isn't it? I didn't force you. It was just a knife. <laughs> it's not a gun or anything like that. <laughs> but yes, I, I did ask Janine three years ago on this glorious day. Happy three years. To bug. be my girlfriend. And we cheers. We are... We're drinking grape. grape yeah, grape. I know. I, I don't know if because now YouTube, you have to flag it when we drink something, when you drink alcohol or when you're smoking or oh yeah, when you say a bad word, you have to tell them because we're now monetized, guys. So Do we? It's grape juice. It's, it's grape okay. juice. Yeah. yeah. This is what we drink on it's the Lord's dope. Day as well. <laughs> so That's true. So yeah, cheers. Three years ago, a boy and a girl came together and Remember here we are things? today doing our 70th something episode of a podcast, married, have a dog, have a new place. Look at this yeah. cutie dog just sitting next to me. Yeah. For those who are watching. Yeah. I always say that and I think I might be excluding the people who listen exclusively to us. But we do have more people watching now, right? Than listening. No, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have, have more people. people on the video, mm-hmm. but we still have a lot of listeners on the podcast. Yeah, we do on the podcast on the podcast podcast platform of their choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think it's an easy listen, right? When you drive to work, when you're stuck in traffic, when you're stuck in traffic, and now when you have no friends, in Dubai is getting awful. And I'm assuming in the Philippines soon enough it will because a lot of people are now out of getting out of schools and it's summer break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everyone's going to go back to their respective homes, hometowns. Yeah, I know. Get out of the hustle and the bustle of Everyone's going to get out of Dubai. It's it's not just the hustle, but everyone's going to get out of Dubai because it's going to be almost in unlivable conditions in the next few weeks. I mean, yes, today I was listening to the radio and they said, Tomorrow, scunny, scunny, sunny skies, highs of 39. Is that your impression of Chris Fade? No. <laughs> if it was Chris Fade, it was 39. No, I can't do an Australian accent. No. 39, mate. 39, mate. No, no. Yeah, but it's going to get it. too too unbearable. Yeah. The weather in itself already is crazy. Like, usually when I, in the last few months, I didn't even turn on the AC. when I'm Because I'm working from home, I don't even turn on the AC. But these days, like, I find myself... Turning on both the ACs that we have at the house just you to can. make sure that the whole can, place is yeah. getting getting its uh, ventilation. Mm-hmm. But it is crazy, guys. So let's buckle up. Dewa bill is going to go high. Go high. What is your number one tip to survive the summer in here in, the, in Dubai? Wear SPF. Yeah. 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 Mine is carry a, a bottle with you at all times. A bottle oh, of water. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Speaking but of... Spe- S- SPF yes is an amazing suggestion by the way yeah yeah I mean even I if it's stocked not up summer. on SPF by the way guys even if it's not summer yeah just, even if it's not even if you're indoor just wear your SPF every day. exactly exactly look at Joshua's skin look at me I'm glowing <laughs> I'm glowing guys but that's mostly because we just got back from the Philippines as well yeah we, uh, we attended my best friend's wedding Shout out to Gio and Christine. Yeah. Getting Welcome to the club. Married. Welcome to the club. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome so to... he was the best man at well, my can, wedding. Can we pause? You're saying welcome to the club and I'm looking at you. You're not even wearing your wedding ring. Yeah, it's in the toilet. I usually don't wear my wedding ring at home, guys. So, uh-huh. yeah. And I just got back from the gym, okay. which explains why I look really big right now. It's swole. Swole. <laughs> I sacrificed my sweat to the gods at the metal establishment. It's not a metal. It's actually one of the chicest what? <laughs> gyms that you can be. Yeah, in. I know. It's not even it's not even called a gym. So the it's gym that we up. go to is called a club. Yeah. 
And I'm like, wow. Who the who are we? I know. Who are we, man? I can't. Yeah. From so, spending like 100 bucks in a gym in Abu Hale to now at a very pricey who are establishment. You? Who are you? I have no idea. Sometimes I forget who I am. Three years. Yeah. What? What is the thing that still makes you kilig, if ever you're kilig? So wait, for those who are not Filipino speakers, kilig is like the feeling when you get the that butterfly in your tummy feeling. Yeah. So what is what? Can you repeat the question? Three years. What's the what is something that still makes you kilig? I think. Um... When there's so many things, but you do this thing where you leave notes around the house. I really like that, especially when I'm having a bad day or something like that. And then I wake up to it because by the time I wake up, we're already out. Yeah. Usually. So in the beginning, it was like that, especially yeah. when I have those anxious moments, especially when I perform or anything like that. You always send a message or you give me a call before I get on stage. Those are the nice things. Those are the things that I'll always cherish. Max is walking out. Is like, this He's is like, bull crap. This is cheesy, guys. <laughs> I, I didn't don't watch believe it. I didn't know I'm watching this. a Korean novella. <laughs> but yeah, but that's... I do. I do. I love that. I love just encouraging you. Yeah. Because I believe in you. But it's... it's Like, in this day and age, when you say three years, people are like, oh, you're still a baby, you know? Uh, that's still a... It's still a... I think we are. I'm it's not... still a new relationship. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. Like, lately, uh -huh. like, three years is a long mm -hmm. time. It depends on what sort of lens you're looking from, right? Yeah, that's so. Sure. I guess from those who have been dating for a few months, they're like, "Whoa, three years!" But those like our parents who have been dating for what thirty, almost forty years, they'd be like, "You guys are babies," right? Yeah, it's from a, their from their perspective, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. But I think three years is a great feat. What is three years? So you have paper, you have. What what are we on right now? But I think that's more marriage. So maybe we celebrate that when we Oh okay. We yeah, yeah, you, you schooled me about this once. Yeah, like paper and this and that. Yeah. But we have too many celebrations going on, huh? We were supposed to have dinner today because we're like, you know what, three years, let's do it. But then we have so many dates. We have our boyfriend, girlfriend officially together date. We have our our um what is it called? Our, ma or our wedding our dates, court but marriage. the court marriage yeah. date. You have the wedding wedding date. Yeah. Official wedding date. Yeah. Christian wedding date. You have my birthday. Okay. I mean, We together. have your birthday. No, together. We have adoption day for Max. Together as a couple. And we have the engagement date as we well. We have the date when we first started the podcast. Yeah. So many things. So many things A to lot, celebrate. A lot of things to celebrate. Yeah. But yeah. I'm super thankful for everything that we celebrate. Yeah. I'm thankful for you. Celebrate the the wins and uh, ignore and the losses, I guess. Mm. The L's. I don't think you should ignore a loss. I think you should learn from it. Mm. It works best for me when I hide it emotionally and until it blows up on sudden day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just like yeah. yesterday. I, uh, she needs to chill out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but where were we? We just got back from the Philippines. Yes. That's why I'm glowing. Okay. And uh, we went for my best friend's glowing. wedding. Yeah, after glow of the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the Philippines, guys. Every time I'm there, I'm just like in a whole new different world. Forget about everything. Mm, but I'm, I'm one with my people over but, there. What, what do I always tell you? You're in the Philippines with Dubai money. Yes. Which is the best thing ever, exactly. by the way, guys. It is. Yeah. It is great. If I was in the Philippines with Philippines money, I think I would still have fun, but... Like, I wouldn't be on grabs. I would be on jeepneys. Like, I wouldn't be eating outside food. I'll be eating, like, calendarias. It's not calendaria. It's carinderia. Carinderias. Yeah. But also, will your tummy be able to digest carinderia food? See, it's like, um, it's like a workout, right? So, mm -hmm. if I work out my stomach to eat carinderia food every day, mm -hmm. stomach of steel. Okay. Stomach of steel, yes. Sure. Yeah. But currently, guys, I'm like on four probiotics, eight prebiotics, ten postbiotics, I guess. I have no idea. All the I iotics inside. I'm on apple cider vinegar. I don't have any of the ice. Yeah, I'm just like... Yeah, his, his so, tummy, you, you would think for someone who's half Filipino, half Indian, you would have like a tummy of steel. Yeah. 
but not my dad has a tummy of steel guys i do like you can eat a raw chicken and still be okay <laughs> yeah that's max yeah that's max I, i think i have a good tummy i've never so far in the three years we've been together i've never had yeah an incident of like for me it's like almost on a weekly basis yeah. or something like that you just have a messed up stomach yeah 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 but it's okay i yeah. still i still love it over there as long as there's a bidet in my sight mm-hmm. i'm clear mm-hmm. i'm clear that's not everywhere right yeah it's not everywhere but it's getting there like it's getting there it's i'm impressed it's with not the where i want it to be but it is going there so i think another few years mm-hmm. yeah that's my that's my vision for philippines 2025 So, what have we done in the Philippines cuz I see that you're wearing something? Yeah, I was going to talk about that first, special. but I want to say that I first went this is the first time I went to Cagayan de Oro. Yeah. In Bukidnon. Bukidnon. So beautiful. Yeah, bu- it's not Bukidnon. So beautiful, but again I got pissed because one thing about me guys that you have to know is that I hate getting ripped off. And I hate it more than anything. Mm-hmm. I always think I am the the ripper not no, the ri- the ripper off. The ripper off not the rippy off. Mhm. And this time it happened to me and Janine clearly saw how pissed I was. I didn't let it go and uh, until a few days after. until a few days after but this basically it's because of me. Uh, I like I go to Philippines people think I'm a basketball player. All the time happens, guys. I'm used to it now. I already have a story in case they do ask, so that's okay. So yeah, this this driver tried to rip me off for this air air no, not air fare. Yeah, the, the road fare that we had. Can you pause there cuz you said basketball player? Everyone in the Philippines would ask him if he's a basketball player. I don't know if it's a thing because they know that it would boost a man's ego, but clearly Joshua's ego it shoots up when someone calls, "Oh, sir, are you a basketball player?" "Mom, sir." <laughs> so I'll tell you a story. But okay, okay. I know we're, we're sidetracking a lot, but this is one of my favorite stories ever and I don't think I've ever told it on the podcast. But this is the time I was driving in the Philippines. I have My no, we were on our way to our wedding. Mm-hmm. This is our wedding, right? Yep. Yes. So it was Janine on my right, my brother on the back, and I'm driving. So I guys, but I I when I was driving, I took your uh, brother and my brother, both of our brothers. Oh yes, yes. Okay, so I was driving in the Philippines. Janine on my right, and both our brothers at the back, and I'm driving, and I by mistake, change lanes at the last moment. Because there's Because. a bridge on the left, and the right side is like under the bridge. Exactly. Yeah. So I do a sudden lane change, and before I know it, there's this guy in front of my car uh, while I'm driving. Like it's still quite a distance, and he's telling me to stop. Like he gets the flashlight and he starts flashing, mm-hmm. and I'm assuming it's for me because he's on my lane. I mean, there's no technically no lanes in Philippines, but he was literally in front of my car, so I had to stop and I pulled to the side of the road. He's And not just a guy. He's an MMDA. MMDA, yeah. yes, MMDA guy. It's like a an authority, a road. Authority. It's a road authority. Yeah. yeah, it's like the equivalent of. Met- it's Metro Manila. A traffic Manila. camera yeah. here. Yeah, they 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 still do it like old school. Like yeah. they have a person watching the roads. So he comes out of his hiding spot because that's where they usually are. You cannot see them at all, but all of a sudden he'll open Boom. like the the sewer cover and he'll come out. <laughs> it's like that. And uh, so gotcha. he comes, he stops me. I put put down my window. I'm ready to, to talk to him. And he's like, "Sir, do you know what you did?" And he's talking to me. No, he first looks at me and then looks at Janine. Then he starts talking in English, mm-hmm. and I'm talking to him in English. And then Janine comes somewhere in the middle and she starts talking to Galog. And he's like, "Ah, Filipina, po, what is it? I Filipina po kayo or something yeah. like that." So he's also startled at the same time. And Janine then takes over the the discussion. I'm just sitting there, and uh, all of a sudden he's like, um, "Sir, are you a basketball player? Are you part of like a league or something here in the Philippines?" And I'm like, "Yeah, actually, I'm starting forward, you know." So I just is there a starting forward? Yeah. Okay. I think I don't know. I know there's a forward. I'm a power bottom. Okay. Yeah, power forward. I don't know. There's something forward. Okay. I just said something forward, and he's like, "Oh, that explains it a lot. You do look like a what is it? The trade? Yeah. Um, you do look like a import. An import. Yes. And I'm yes. like, yeah, real recognizes real at that moment. No one recognizes no one. Yeah. At this moment, because yeah. first of all, you're not a a power forward. So he really boosted my ego. All of a sudden, mm-hmm. I felt like I'm the king of the world. Mm-hmm. Like I'm on the league of Kobe Bryant. Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, 
all those kinds of people. Mm-hmm. LeBron James, Stephen Curry. Okay. Um, you can calm down now. James Harden. Okay. You know, he just wanted to give you a fine. playoffs, right? everything like that. You know, he just wanted to yeah, butter but you that, up and I was, give you a fine. I would pay the fine and I would pay the fine of everyone in Metro Manila that day. Because I was so happy, you know? Chasho's face, though, he was so, so smitten. Like... He was so happy to be called a basketball Exactly. Player. You saw, like, all our wedding money that we saved up. I was like, here's my bank account. <laughs> go through Here a party. You go. The fine plus more. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All for you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> then I'm like, sorry, I got to go now because I have a game. We have tryouts. Uh-huh. Not tryouts. We have... Um, it's called tryouts. No, that's tryouts is when you're trying out for a team. I'm already... You're already captain. on it. Okay, you're yeah, the captain. I'm already captain. Okay. So, yeah, yeah that's... Uh, just a game like a like a friendly match mm, i wouldn't say it like if there's national tv okay watching my every move then i don't consider that yeah but there's no one match. there's no one watching your move no no one's mm. no one's eyeing you to be on this guy TV was clearly coach. watching me this whole time yeah because he wanted yeah. one thing for me and he asked for a signature as well so yeah. an auto- autograph an autograph for the fine yeah. that he gave you um i'm pretty sure i saw him frame it so (laughs) yeah but that's that it was so that's the story so like every time i go to penas that's usually what happens people think i am uh, a basketball player okay dwell on it so no so that's the reason why like i think i usually get ripped off and then i have to throw out my tagalog and then they realize oh crap he's one of us Mm -hmm. we have to treat him with fairness and equality Mm mm-hmm um but yeah but the wedding was really beautiful like literally raining all day five minutes before the wedding stops raining i'm like wow this is crazy crazy and i give this bomb fire best man speech floors the crowd people are like yo pass him the basketball let him slam dunk to end this night but um yeah beautiful wedding congratulations again to Gio and christine may you find love in each other and they have found love in each other. More deeper love. Okay, yeah. fine, sure. Okay, but another reason that we went to the Philippines is that we went to see a Vogue model. Actually, yes. Yeah, the hottest Vogue model, yes. I must say. Yes. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, so that's where we are in like our... The most beautiful Vogue. Oh, yeah, for model. sure, for okay. sure. Yeah. yeah. Also the oldest yes. Vogue model that's ever. That's true. Yeah. That's true, yeah. So I'm very happy that we got a chance to meet. Very honored. Very privileged to meet. Wang Od. Apo Wang Od. Apo, Maria, something. Salvador, Wang Od. Richard, no. the There's fifth. No Salvador. Ogai, Ogoi, something. Wang Od. Yeah. Yes. Apo Wang Od. As you can see, guys, from this shirt, this is like one of the three souvenirs I got back from Buscalan. Mm-hmm. This and the two tattoos. Yeah. Yeah. We um we both got Gat Gat. Both got tattooed because I was gonna say tattooed tattooed uh-huh. up by no one else than the Apple Wong or her. You I got I got tattooed by her niece, which is I'm sure is like five years old, guys. Her grand her grand niece. Yes. But it's it was such a crazy experience, guys. Like most of you are out there adding this to your bucket list. We are out here living life. So, okay, calm so down. guys, calm down. step up, guys, step up. Calm down. We're not live, laugh, loving, you know? Actually, I'm so, so thankful to God for making this happen because all, we almost didn't make it because of this whole typhoon, Betty, yeah. that came through. So the huge super typhoon, actually super typhoon categorized, uh, that that lashed through Guam mm. was then headed for the Philippines and Taiwan. Last minute went like north east sort of, and we missed it by literally a hair. Yeah. So I was on my phone every single. She was on her phone every single day. We didn't even decide that we were going for this trip until a day before. Yeah. Like we already put the down payment, but we're like, you know, we can forego this at the cost of our health. Yes. And, and our safety. safety. Yeah. So, but literally on the day before, or even on the day of, I think in the morning. The day of, of a few hours, we're like, you know what? Let's let's, let's do, it. do it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's fine. Um, and our tour, uh founder our tour group founder yeah what's the name of the tour company let's give them a shout out to anyone who wants to actually do uh, aling maliit 
her her name is Aling Maliit. That means in Tagalog, we are all small. No, Aling means like little miss, like miss small. Miss Aling is Maliit. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know how to speak Tagalog. Yeah, Aling Maliit Adventure. Exactly. PH. Yeah. So they do these uh, group tours. You can also book private tours with them. But basically, they they do everything from picking you up from wherever you are, whether that's Manila. Uh, oh, wherever you are, like designated Banga, pickup Banga, points. Banga. But yeah. Yes. Sorry. Not wherever you are, but we were in Quezon City. So we had to meet up somewhere close to Quezon City with other people. And they would pick us up in like pick up points mm-hmm. we would get into this van go into a ride of like what 14 hours all the way to the north of the philippines exactly and then we passed by a lot of places but one particular one was baguio where we stopped over from uh on our, oh, sorry we stopped in baguio on our way to, to pick up Buscalan, yes and guys baguio is cold it was my first time ever yeah and i'm not kidding it's cold cold we it was around what 15 degrees maybe no more. even less yeah even less because we were there very early morning very early and it's one of the craziest drives by the way guys i'm not kidding so it's like literally a curve all the way up it's because zigzag. baguio is it goes up there. and it's like a hairpin exactly ride. and it's the foggiest thing you've ever seen and there are cars in the middle of the road just hazard because they're like i cannot go up and these are all massive trucks and all like manual stick shift cars mm-hmm. and this driver of ours amazing amazing guy what's his name um onen kuya shout out to kuya onen because he navigates the road like no one's business like yeah like fast and the furious franchise you should get him for the next <laughs> i think he he's that is good. probably one of the best drivers i've one actually of the ridden yeah yes. yeah, yeah. And he's he's really in the good thick fog he's going up this mountain yes and like a with a van time. full of like what 13 people 12 exactly 12 people. yeah 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 he's really good yeah, the Lord is guiding him. That's all I can say. <laughs> He's gone through it like a lot Jesus of times. Jesus took the wheel that day. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Jesus was on the wheel. On the wheel, yeah. yes. Navigating through that whole yes, thing. Yes, the GPS of life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it was very foggy. I just So I tried to sleep as much as I can because we had a delayed flight before this. We visited my aunt. We went back. We we went back home to the condo in Kazan City. Mm. We bought a couple of grocery items that we would need or like some items that we would need for this trip. And then before you know it, it was already time to go to the meeting place. And so we were super tired. I wasn't feeling well, remember? She wasn't feeling well. And I'm thinking, you know what? Should we just back out now? There's always another time we can come back. And I'm like, no, it's not. No, no, we're already here. Let's just do it or else I'm going to regret it. And it's going to be a while since we do it again. So... I try to sleep as much as I can on this van. It's a little bit difficult because you're crammed. They you know there's a lot of people in it and it was tough. But I woke up and suddenly I can't see anything because it was dark and all I could see was fog. And like we're driving through this thick fog and Josh and I were just looking at each other. Yeah, because like I praying. couldn't sleep the whole time. Yeah. I couldn't sleep. We were sleep. just praying that it would be fine. But yeah, yeah it so was So we okay. reached Baguio. Uh, we picked up. Really bad with names. Yeah. But yeah, we picked up. We Madonna. Picked up. Yeah. And her husband. Yes. Yes. And then we continue our voyage to Buscalan. And then again, guys, it's literally like a one-way road, but it's meant for two cars and there's like landslides. Yes. Because it's on a mountain. On the road. Yeah, it's on a, a mountain. very yes. high mountain. It's basically called Mountain Province. So it's a province filled yeah. with mountains. Um, and unfortunately, due to the rain, due to the change in weather, there are some sort of landslides that have happened. Correct. And Kuyonin was saying that there was a we huge passed, backlog like a week or a few days before our a actual... A few weeks ago. Yeah. Where they had to wait for like six, seven hours on the road because... Just to clear it up. There was a big, big um, rock that fell through. It was a boulder. And they had to actually bomb that boulder so that it would shatter into pieces and then make way again for the road Mm -hmm. anyway we digress we got there most amazing view ever it was early in the morning probably 7 8 a.m yeah around yeah i think it was around 9 9 9 10 
Um, super thankful that the rain, because it was raining, but then the rain was just a know, very bit, light yeah. rain. So you have an option either to get your bags across through this sort Zip of line, sort trolley of. Li- pulley lift system, and they use a, the machine of a car to so, actually yeah. power so this. Just, just to paint a picture, it's like literally a car that has no wheels, yes. and it's lifted up by bricks. Yes. And when they accelerate, since the car wheel turns, it this sort of wheel is connected to a rope that helps propel this. I don't know what to say, lift a or sack. sort of... Yeah, it's a yeah, pulley lift yeah. where they put... All, all the way bags. from one side to Buscalan. And that was crazy from, to from see mount, as one well. One mountain to another. Exactly. And, and in like, between, there's like rice fields. Rice fields, everything. I so wonder if some, some stuff have already fallen through. Oh, yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. Yeah. For sure. So, it was really crazy to see like the innovation. And it was just... just so for those who are actually interested in going, it's just 50 pesos to get some of your stuff through that pulley lift yeah. system. And we didn't do it, but that was not the most smart choice. You should do it because you're going to get tired through this whole trek. Yeah. So the trek was like, what, 45 minutes worth of trek? No, going. I think it, the, it was actually shorter for the first trek going to Buscalan. I think it was not more than probably 25, 30 minutes. Maybe. Yeah. But it was like the most beautiful trek I've ever had. Yeah. You go through rice fields because we there there are two routes. One is the sh- like the they call it the shorter way in terms of kilometers, but it, it's harder because you to go do, yes. super steep down and then super steep up. So if you're not well trained enough to go through like a steep uphill, then don't do it. There was a longer route where it was mainly like gradual increase, little flatter, yeah, flat and then gradual increase, uh, and it was through the rice fields it was so 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 beautiful and i have a couple of videos that i posted on yeah when i edit i'm going to put some of these videos and pictures as well so from there from there you go up and then through the trail you would see a couple of like cemented um uh, road not road but like a pathway where they start carving what you see in joshua's t-shirt but i'm sure we can insert some footage here as well some patterns that are very native to the Buscalan tribe. Yeah. Which is basically the patterns that Apo Wang Od and her ancestors used to tattoo their tribe. Yeah. The people of their tribe. Um, so that was very cool. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the funniest parts about this trek actually was all of us are like super geared up, like trekking pants, hiking shoes. Um, I had my UV, converse on. Yeah, but like, but you know what I mean. Yeah, like, yeah and yeah. then UV blocking jackets and everything. There are kids in chinelas and slippers, with the sando and some shorts. Literally running this whole trail. Yeah. Not, uh, like their lungs are not phased at all. Sorry, I was about to burp. But yeah, not phased at all. You know, like athletic sort of kids just doing this whole trek, and apparently they do it day to day, but. I think I'll go back to that later. So we get to the village. Get to the village. We get to our homestay. All of us are there. There's around, what, 12, 13 of us. Mm-hmm. And it's like a massive, not a massive room, like a, a moderately sized room. But mm-hmm. attached to it is a like a moderately sized balcony. So some of us were divided between the room and the balcony. So the balcony was more open. But of course, because of the wind and everything, they did like a makeshift sort of shelter with blankets Tense. and like a like sort of things yes and then um we eat by the way there so they provided us with lunch dinner breakfast the next day yeah this tour just they, they provide everything so we're, we're quite spoiled exactly amazing food it was really. a, a Shout really out to amazing Roland. food like it was the chef Claire Roland. Of, yeah, yeah our, dude. seriously if i could get him as a chef here like i would <laughs> he cooks really amazing food and for us, like, I would consider that, like, really organic produce, super fresh food. Because everything is, like, hunted, gathered by them as well mm-hmm. in that side. Yeah. Um, We ate really well. And so um, when we got there, we were told that Wang Od wasn't going to tattoo the same day. Because apparently, so one thing you should know, even if you get there on day one, it's not always the case where you get tattooed on day one. Because Wang Od is, of course, at a certain age where... She also gets to decide her working schedule. If she's not in the mood, she's not in the mood. Then you have to wait till the next day or the day after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's all the and preparation that queue. we saw. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's a queuing system as well. Yeah. 
Um, so we were told that we were not going to get tatted on the same day. So we were like, okay, so maybe on the morning of the next day we would. So mm-hmm. we just made our peace with it. We had our lunch. But mid-lunch, we were told that she's already out in that particular area where she tattoos. Yeah, and we're, we're quite close to where she tattoos. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it was just a, like, like, it was two, just two, 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 houses two houses away. away. Yeah. Um, so not too far of a walk towards there. And so everyone's like, Apple one wood is already out. Finish your food right away. Get ready. And the first ones who would like to go and get tattooed, start queuing up and see, like, take your seat. Yeah. Because there's basically, uh, you know, a bunch of chairs. She it's takes the her Philippine room. consulate style <laughs> queuing, right? So yeah. where you have to move chair every yeah. time someone goes. Yes. So to so get your personalized, uh, not personalized, your own um, stick with Josh, you have it here, right? Yes, I do. Your own stick. At the end of it, there's a thorn of uh, a pomelo, a pomelo uh, fruit. Yeah. So it's basically a fruit. This is a little bit bent, but you know what I mean. So the thorn of the plant of the fruit. Uh, they take it, and this is basically yours. You pay, what, 100 pesos for this? This is the 100 pesos, yes. And you bring it to her, and then she um, now only does her signature three dots of tattoo. So you can tell her where you want it placed, and sometimes she agrees to it, sometimes she doesn't. So she agreed when Josh said that he wanted it on his wrist, but basically he has no space anywhere for for a tattoo anymore. But I have more space, and so I told her I wanted it in one location. And she looks at me, and she's like, nope, <laughs> no can do. I don't want it there. And I was like, okay, where do you want it, Apple Wang Oud? And she told me she wanted it um, on the top of one of my other tattoo, which is my granddad's car. Yeah. And I was like, okay, sure, yeah, if that's where you want it. She called the shots. It. Yeah. Can you imagine, like, guys preparing for a tattoo? You know the placement, you know the design, and then you get there and the tattoo artist is like, no, I'm yeah. going to do it here. Yeah. So before, actually, when she used to tattoo designs, she would also tell you no if you chose one design and she just doesn't want it. So so from what I remember, what I read online back in the day, like maybe 10, 15 years ago, when uh, she was in better health or in better condition, she would judge you. Uh, like take a quick glance at you and then understand like okay this person i need to do an eagle tattoo or i need to do the dog tattoo or i need to do the wave tattoo or centipede tattoo you know what i mean so it's like you couldn't just come over there with a design in your mind and a placement on my in mind exactly she'll decide which placement and she'll decide what tattoo yeah so that was that was back in the day but of course now because of her age and of course like a lot of other factors come into place. So she only does a signature three dot tattoo. Mm-hmm. Um, what does it mean? I don't even know. Or I, I must have forgot. It probably has a meaning, but it's also quite universal. Like you can sort of create your own meaning to it, right? It can be if you're, you know, a Christian, you're you're very pious, religious, then you can say the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Three dots. Exactly. Or it can be, I don't know, three or people if in like, your life. If you like reading, then it's like the three musketeers or something. Yeah, sure, whatever, yeah. 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 Whatever or if you're, like, a fan of old movies, the Three Ninjas movies. Can Do you be. remember? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we so I got mine here on my wrist. Yeah. And, or it uh, can be me, you, and Max. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, it could be. He's he just looking, care. he doesn't care, yeah. yeah. So, it really can just be any sort of meaning to you. Exactly. So, w- we get there and, you know, we, we get to our queue. We were quite nervous because... I haven't showered. You haven't showered. Exactly. And we're like, okay. And so. she looked quite stern when we first saw her. Like, it was such a beautiful sight to behold when we first saw her tattooing a guy. And by the way, you cannot see her, but like, since it's not too far from our place, it's like two houses away. Mm-hmm. But closer to the direction of where the tattoo area is, you can hear. Yes, you could hear it. Yeah. And I was fangirling the whole time. I was. I was awestruck. I was in awe. I was like, wow, this is Apple Wang Od. I've been dreaming of getting to her for the longest time yeah. probably nine ten years ago since i first especially us her. being fan of like tattoos being the art really want to go back to our roots in terms of philippines yeah uh, traditions as well so it mm-hmm. really meant a lot to us and it's meant to a lot to everyone on her trip as well she shot up to fame much more recently when she got featured in Philippine Vogue's cover. Just and literally, guys, after this video, go on YouTube and type Apo Wang Od 
and how many vlogs are there and there's people like oh i traveled all the way to meet the 106 year old tattoo artist in philippines so it's it's really blowing up and i'm so glad that we got a chance on the same day that we arrived yeah um, tattooed by a me. really good tour company really amazing people that we were with yeah and like i said so we got there she was a little bit stern and Ginny and i were kind of nervous i'm like okay because she's just getting the tattoos done yeah she's looking like, at the camera the and then like yeah okay you get a picture with her after you get your tattoo yeah. you pay her there's a certain way that she's used to receiving the money over yes. the money yeah. so you have to fold it once and that's it you know it has to be very and then you take a picture and then that's it and Josh and I were looking at each other. We're like, okay, our turn is starting to get closer. And we're like, she's so serious. She's so stern. Maybe she's not in the mood. Suddenly, Josh gets tattooed. And she she, she, she was asking a couple of questions to Queer Roland, who was with us that time. Because we can't understand, you know, what she was He was our talking. translator. He was our cook. He's like a... She doesn't speak Filipino. It's the only dialect, sort of, that I know in Philippines. She speaks Ilocano, but more so their version of Ilocano, which is like the so mountain different. Ilocano. It's so different. Yeah, it does. It does sound it's like, different. like, even if you think you can speak Tagalog, it's completely no, different. No, I couldn't understand yeah. anything. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so she tattooed Josh. I could I could see Josh, you know, wincing a couple of times. And I'm like, oh, gosh, this is going to be painful. Yeah. Um, Not going to lie, it is painful. It is painful and it's actually still healing. Like, yeah. I got another tattoo from a real tattoo shop. Not a real, but like a tattoo shop, tattoo a machine, modern. everything. That's already healed, but this one is still healing. So, yeah. really deep penetration with the charcoal as well. Yeah, so it's charcoal as her um, ink. Ink, yes. And we showed you the thorn. Um, yeah. Did the we? Pomelo, yeah. It's included, it, yeah, I guess. Did. Um, and what's horrifying about it okay i'm not gonna spoil it it's not horrifying but what's what's very odd yeah. about it is that first it's a very different feeling from when if if you're a tattooed person it's not the same at all in terms of the feeling mm -hmm. and then second is that every time she would hit her stick so that the the thorn would go in and she pulled it up. <laughs> Your skin would... It would pull a little bit of the skin yes, up. Yes, exactly. So it was quite weird to see my skin being pulled in a certain way with a thorn. And, you know, it gets bloody, of course. So for those who are a little bit um too... How do I say? Like, scared Queasy about, yeah, about all these easily things. Easily queasy and easily fainting. Exactly. But But, you know, the funny part about this thing was... This tattoo is like, it takes around, what, two, three minutes to get done? It's very quick. And there's a queuing system. So literally, it's like factory work. Yes. So before even Janine could really think and understand and fathom everything that is happening, she's already like on her second dot. Yes. Because it's literally, so there was, who was first? Um, Mad. Mads and then you. was first. And then me. And like literally, no time to think. You sit down, she sanitizes you. Yes. Starts already. I sanitize myself. She doesn't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Just the, FYI, bring your own sanitizer if you want. Sanitizer, to sanitize. bring your own wipes, all those kinds of things. Yes. Before I know it, I'm already there. Like I said, on my second dot. I get up, take a pic and it was quick already picture, my and it, Janine's already in yeah. the chair. Yeah. And she's putting the dots, like yes. the, the stencil, basically. And like I said, she, she, has, like, she has this very stern face. She just wants to get over her day. But some somehow something changed. Uh, she was asking questions to Queer Roland and then she started, she switched to Tagalog for a second with you, right? Or no? No, Queer Roland translated. Yeah, yeah. He was, that. so she spoke to Queer Roland, Queer Roland spoke to Janine in Tagalog, yeah. asking if we were married yes. and all these things. And like I, like, like for me as a comedian, I think that is like, like one of the highest points in my comedy career though, like in a way where I don't speak the language that she speaks. I... She was not in a mood. She is 106 years old. Mm -hmm. And I literally made her laugh saying one word. Yes. And for me, like, knowing, like, okay, like, literally, like, language barriers, age barriers really doesn't mean anything when it comes to having a good laugh, you know? Yeah. I made her laugh and she's, like, we have the video where she's clearly looking at me and laughing. And, yeah. Like, and I don't I know. I love like, that moment because I was getting tattooed and speaking to her and then. You know, she was interacting with me and I'm like, oh gosh, she's laughing. She likes us because I felt like, as we said earlier, she was super stern 
with most of oh, this. Oh, and she was even a little bit um, caught up because two of the needles broke while I was Correct. getting my tattoo. Like, it bent. Yeah. She couldn't, like, because it's usually supposed to stay straight. Tick, 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 tick inside. But for me, twice it bent because, you know, um, my muscle mass is really out of this world. But... She was saying that your skin is very hard. Very hard. Very, yeah. So it was it was really nice to see her laugh with us. Yeah. And uh, in our picture, she's also smiling in our picture. Yes. And she's the sweetest old lady, guys. Like, I really hope she lives for another 106 years I if know. she can. While I was getting tattooed, I was just looking at her and I'm like, wow, this is one of the best memories I would have in my life where I have someone who is revered as a person she is basically treated like a queen in her village because she, I mean, come on, she is. She basically brought business to her whole village and she's the oldest tattoo artist in the world. People come to her even if she's super, super far away. Plus, she used to tattoo warriors. So what so, an honor. So tell her, to, like, tell them the, like a quick story about how this tradition came to that particular village as well. Like, it was back in the day. It wasn't just any Tom, Dick, and Harry he wants to get tattooed, yes. right? So basically, um, everyone... Well, there were certain tattoos that were tattooed on people because they were warriors. And I don't know if this is true, but I read that um, in order for her to tattoo some of the people who wanted to get tattooed, especially an eagle, um, they would have to bring the head of the person that they have killed to prove that they are a warrior, that they've killed someone, and then she can uh, start the tattoo needful. process. Yeah. And so it wasn't just her, of course. There were a lot of other, they call themselves Mamba Batok, or the, the, the term of tattoo artist, because Mamba Batok means basically... To uh, hit. To hit, yeah. yes. Um, so it was of you know a couple of people who were Mamba Batok, but she's the last living. known living Mamba Batok. Who, Original, from the OG. Yes course she has passed on um her knowledge about the art to her grand nieces she doesn't have her own uh, daughter or son uh offsprings yeah. but she does have sisters who have children that she uh, fortunately taught one of them is grace she is one of the most famous yeah, one of the, the most grand famous nieces. Yeah. i've seen her her work amazing so mm -hmm. people come to her as well for very intricate work um, and then, of course, some of the other nieces, uh, grand nieces as well. Josh, uh, the, what do you have? A, a the centipede. The centipede on one of his arms. And I forgot the girl's name who did mine, but she was literally like yeah, 10, bells. 12 years old. No, come on. Yeah. She's probably like 13, 14, oh. probably in her teens. Not a big age yeah, gap. Yeah, I know, but still, I know. Like, but but very, very young. For me, I'm just thinking like, can you see these extremities of the mo the oldest tattoo artist and yes. then a 12 13 year old girl yes. tattooing me and, and like how much trust i had yes yeah it was crazy because yes. you know me like the my whole tattoo process is really lengthy and just me just deciding on the day of by a like a super young artist was was really crazy for me but yeah but all in all such a great experience and there's one thing that i want to end about this whole story it's the school process and i want you to talk about that because that for me was really crazy as well. Mm -hmm. Like, can you guys like imagine guys a village? Like, so how will people or the kids go to school? Because like there was not a car in sight in that village. Um, no motorcycle. No, I didn't even see a bicycle. I think, and I think even having a bicycle on that terrain would be near difficult. impossible. Yeah, because it was basically like up and down, right? So it's going to be difficult. So th how the school system works is that the pre-K and the kindergartens and sort of the younger. Uh, generation of kids would have their school the closest because yeah. it was the easiest like you could just walk to so from our home state was the next building literally, it was literally the next, next building. building was pre-kindergarten yes uh and in kindergarten so the very very young ones and then as you grow older your school basically gets further and further away because they don't have a lot of land now yeah i mean they do but it's basically mountains and so Bev's one of the tattoo artists, we probably have a picture of her, and you're a yeah. tattoo artist as well, I forgot her name, would walk every single day the same trek that we did, which was about 30 to 40 minutes, depending on how quick you are. Probably for them, it's just 20 minutes, but would literally cross from one mountain to another and walk more um, to get to school. Yeah. And this is what they would do every day. So yeah, so the proximity, the proximity of the school gets further away as you... 
grow older. Grow older. Because, of course, yes. as you grow older, you get more independent. You can face more challenges. Yeah. And apparently it was done on purpose so that they trained themselves to really do that whole check um, in a quicker time to really improve their their lifestyle as well, I think, from going between one place to the other, especially in that hard-hitting terrain. Yeah. But it was such a great experience, guys. Like, it, no signal. It was a great you reminder disconnect. of, because, again, we come from Dubai. We're very spoiled. It was a great reminder of how peop other people live their lives. And you don't need all of the luxury things that you need, that you have, that you yeah. think you need. It was a great um, reminder of how we could all just come back to Earth. Exactly. Yeah. I think, like... Like, I wouldn't consider it slow living, but more of, like, a village lifestyle, you know? Because yeah. half the day we were there, it was there was no electricity, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. um, cold showers. Mm -hmm. um, getting muddy. Seeing all these insects. Dogs fighting for food. Yeah. It was really so beautiful to see at the same time. And another crazy thing about this place is, so this area, Buscalan, is where technically weed is legal. Yes. So... Janine and I, we were, because we had to show proof of life to our family that we are still alive because, of course, 14 hours of traveling and they don't hear from us. That is concerning. So we go and do this piso net. Just li We literally take internet it's for like... It's a coin internet where you put in a couple of coins to get a few minutes. A satellite night. link up yeah. or something. And literally the pot is right there and it's already growing weed. I'm like, this is crazy. A plant pot. A to plant explain. Yeah. pot, yeah. I have a picture of that. Maybe I can post it. I don't know if I'll get in trouble, but it wasn't in the UAE, but I think it should be fine. If I'm if I, there's no episode from here, guys, that means I got deported. <laughs> but uh, we didn't use any just we didn't just use for any, the yeah. record, but a, it was very um it was very prevalent there. You can yes. you can actually use yes. uh weed if you want to or smoke weed if you want to yeah but then you get down and there's like dog sniffing police dogs around Sni uh, drug sniffing police dogs around. yeah so there are checkpoints where they do check in case of because you're not allowed to bring it back there. down so but such a but such a humbling experience it was so great to see this tradition that is still living on i really hope like i said wang odd lives another 106 years yeah um it's really? great for her healthy life. Exactly. But she is very healthy still. Very healthy. Still. Guys, can you imagine she's tattooing, squatting yes. on the floor? Yes. And she still goes up and down that whole trek that we did. So for a 107-year-old, you go up a one old. And, and you've seen like these, these uh, every time I speak to a tattoo artist, everyone complains of back pain. Because of course, bending in a certain yeah. position, getting yeah. it to a certain angle. And she's just doing it like yeah, what Asian is it? squatting on a what a sack of yeah, rice yeah. or something. Of course, it's not like the detailed stuff that she used to do back in the day, but still at hundred and six, like yes. if I'm still working at hundred and six, yes, I I've I don't know I don't know what yeah. to say about that. Her life should definitely be celebrated, which we are doing, and she is basically a gem in the Philippines. And if you get a chance, if you're into tattoo as an art form if you get a chance well, even if you're not like we had people on our tour who was like haven't got a tattoo at all like this was their first ever tattoo yes so yes just but of course maybe, they appreciate art of course of, of tattoo. Course. Yeah, yeah 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 maybe just to to go back to their roots or i don't know have a part of the tradition ingrained on their bodies mm -hmm. i think that really says a lot so whoever gets a chance whoever has um time i would highly recommend it you can also reach out to us if you really want the contact details but i think we'll put it at the bottom of the the video as well mm -hmm. shout out to all of our um co-group members group members yeah tour group members. Our, a big shout out to ivan as well yeah okay because he took takes amazing pictures. Yeah, he did take a lot of yeah. amazing pictures. And I think Snaps yeah, I by Ban on yeah. Instagram. You have Matt. You have Madonna. You have every single every single one. One of them. Yeah, you know who you are. Tour. We were all almost sleeping next to each other on that. Um, we were eating together. Eating we were together, drinking together. Traveling together and sharing really. stories together. Yeah, it's it was really fun. Like Janine and I initially wanted a private tour, but it was too expensive. But so we did a join in tour. But best decision we did be we made as well. Yeah, because we met amazing people on that yeah. tour. Yeah, yeah. And again, shout out to Kuya Onin, best driver ever. Best driver and ever. Kuya Roland. Kuya Roland, best cook ever. Yeah. 
here's to uh, three years. Yeah. More adventure. Here's to together. three years. Here's to three dots. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's what it meant. Three dots means three years. Three years, yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. We're not going to celebrate four years That's anymore. it. We have to go to Wang Wad again and yeah, get another so dot. Put another one. Yeah. Okay, and then another one, then another, another one. Another one, yeah. Okay. Just get covered in another dots. Another one. Yeah. DJ Khaled DJ will be Khaled. there next time. But yeah, thanks for listening to this episode as well, guys. Um, we just wanted to relive the amazing memory that we have had. Seriously, the like pleasure. Like Janine and I, we did honor. find ourselves complaining a little bit throughout the whole journey, but this is like tiny complaints about yeah, like maybe about the how cramped and then the sleep and everything, but still like. Oh, one thing I forgot to say, like we saw the Banawi rice terraces, which is one of my dream as well as a young Filipino kid seeing the rice terraces on the, what peso note was 20. it? 20. Was it 20? I believe so. Um, And seeing it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to be there. I want to see it. I want to see it in person. It's amazing. It looks amazing. And my mom telling me that when she was young as one of her excursions. In yeah, one of her field trips. Yeah. Field trips. Like they actually went to the Banawi rice terraces and I remember her describing to me how beautiful it is so on the way back to manila we actually saw and we were able yeah. to pass through and phew that view i just have to say is Seriously, beautiful and it goes for miles guys like yes. you like it's huge it's you huge. understand how much rice is being Produced. cultivated over yeah. there then yeah and i'm actually very excited to see another rice terrace yes. in bali yeah that's what we're going that's where we're and compare both of them going. i'm sure they're both equally beautiful in their own in their own way. ways yeah yeah but yeah guys thank you for listening to another episode with you burping the whole Sorry. Like half of yeah. the time yeah happy three years happy three years happy, happy 70 June-teen. whatever episode we are on right now happy juneteenth happy 107th happy birthday to wang odd middle of the year she's definitely listening to this episode oh right yeah now. for sure yeah. yeah thank you wang odd for a beautiful tattoo um, which is still healing at this point. <laughs> um, and thank you guys to you because you're just you keep you just keep listening to us. Thank you. We still have a lot more episodes to go, and I hope you enjoyed this one. Yeah, and I hope you stick with us for the ride. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Max, for being the best dog ever. Yeah. And so on that note, have a nice day. We love you. We like you as a friend. Bye. Bye.